Welcome to the fifth episode of the Ithacast. I'm Dustin Nguyen, and I'm here alone today because Seth is on vacation in Massachusetts, and I completely forgot to set him up to record remotely, so that's my bad. But I'm here today with Josh Dolan. He's a second ward resident and the new director of the Ithaca Festival, which is what we're primarily going to talk about. But first, let's talk more about Josh's past. When did you move here to Ithaca? Uh, I've been in Ithaca since 2003. Uh, I was job hunting. I was up at the Annabelle Taylor Library one day, first day in town, I think, and was walking down the hill down Stewart Ave, and I saw this Help Wanted poster in the, the window of this restaurant. So I walked in, got an application, had an interview like within 24 hours, and uh, that's how I started working at the ABC Cafe. Worked there for seven years. Then um, moved over to Cooperative Extension, and I've been over there ever since. Nice. What do you do at Cooperative Extension? I run a a regional school and community garden program. Um, So I spend a lot of time up in Rochester, Elmira, Hornell, all over Ithaca and Tompkins County, everywhere in between, um, doing youth gardening, programming, uh, helping people with the logistics of setting up new school and community gardens, doing trainings and stuff like that. And very relevant to the second ward, you were pretty instrumental in the permaculture garden at Conley Park. Yeah, uh, worked on that a couple of years ago, trying to kind of push the limits about how we think about public space and um, how we relate to food growing in the urban environment. I think uh, public space, there's a ton of it, so might as well make it productive and not just uh, have a bunch of boring street trees everywhere. I mean, the upside, too, is that it's attractive, even when the plants aren't productive uh, or if they're picked, it still makes the park more beautiful. Yeah, for sure. Uh, food growing plants have flowers just like every other plant. So um, and, you know, I, I happen to think plants that are growing food are more beautiful because uh, they mean something. They're not just pretty to look at. They're they're fulfilling a necessary purpose in people's lives. So and on top of that, you run something called Sap Squatch. Uh, you make the maple syrup that Amber and I eat for breakfast a lot here. How long has that been going on? Sap Squatch has been in existence for 10 years, started it in 2008. I've uh, recently, in the last two years, developed a, a big wholesale account with Gimme Coffee. So they've been running this Sap Squatch latte special during the season, which is super cool because Sap Squatch is kind of like a household name now in Ithaca. So that's what we're going for. Probably never be able to keep up with the demand at this point, but who cares? It's fun and people love it. Yeah, I've I've enjoyed many a Sab Squash Latte at Gimme Coffee, which is less than a block away from me. You also have a, a radio show at WRFI, our local public radio sh- channel. Uh, well, it's actually a community radio station, so that we don't get any money uh, from the national government. It's all listener-supported. Thanks um, for that correction, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I actually don't currently have a show. I'm looking into starting a new show um, that's uh, Ithaca Festival radio show, so having local bands on local artists and different uh, performers that you see around the Ithaca Festival joining me on the show and um, hopefully playing a ton of cool local music. That's great. I mean, your old show, which you graciously had me on, um, you would interview local people and you played music. So it was always a good time. Yeah, WRFI is pretty unique. Uh, Just like community radio stations, it has an open format. So we're not locked into playing Top 40 or certain genre-based programs, we can kind of do free-form radio like like the experimental DJs were doing back in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, so it opens up a lot more possibilities and lets people be introduced to a lot more cool music that maybe they haven't heard of before. And music's important to you. You're a musician. Uh, you DJ sometimes. I've always been interested in music. I was in the chorus in school the whole while growing up and played in the band. actually started playing music on the flute if you can believe that. Um, Picked up the guitar when I was a teenager and um, started writing simple songs. Um, And when I moved to Ithaca, there's just such a lush and rich musical community here that if you're musically inclined, you really can't help being drawn into it. Um, So I started out as a fan and trying to help out the music scene in different ways. Eventually landed a pretty cool volunteer gig at the Grassroots Festival, working on the stages there. And yeah, one thing led to another, and that kind of led me to where I am today, working uh, as director of the Ithaca Festival. When did the Ithaca Festival start looking for a new director, and how did you find uh, the listing and, and apply and everything? Uh, the festival was uh, started looking for a director back in the fall. Um, Barnaby uh, Greenberg had moved on. 
he's he's a music promoter and was very busy on top of the Ithaca Festival. So I'm sure he's he's got a lot to do without the the festival on his plate. Um, and I interviewed uh, back in November. Um, I'm I'm pretty close friends with a member of the board um, who I've worked with at Grassroots, Lori Johnson. She's uh, the stage manager at the infield stage there, and she's like, "Have you ever considered?" Uh, you know, becoming the director of the Ithaca Festival, we're kind of looking right now. And they were doing a soft search, so she was kind of spreading the word, word of mouth. And, you know, I hadn't thought much of it, but I, I you know, wanted to brush up my resume and, and maybe do an interview just because just it had been quite a while. So I did that and didn't hear back. And um, and then in January, I called Lori up to see if she wanted to hang out. And uh, she was like, hey, about that Ithaca Festival thing, uh, are you still interested? Apparently, they had hired somebody, uh, but he took one look at the the scope of work and he was out after a week. So it was kind of a baptism by fire, went straight in, you know, hit the ground running, you know, immediately started lining up sponsors so we could get some cash flow going. And, you know, here we are a, a week out. It seems crazy. I mean, I assume that usually under the best of circumstances, the team spends an, at least a year planning for the Ithaca Festival. Yeah, it's a year round position. Um, I think you know, next week after the festival's over, you know, that kind of starts the recap and, and shutting it down process. Um, but that's like probably a month or two of work right there. And then, um, you know, the fiscal year starts in October. So that's really when we should be uh, courting our sponsors and getting all that stuff lined up when people are making those decisions. So yeah, in an ideal world, I'd be starting in earnest in October, but, but would already have like a pretty good concept of what direction I want to head in. Um, next year. And, you know, I already got a lot of ideas, but, you know, just got to get one under my belt right now. Right. And when you when you started in January, was there work you could reuse or were you basically started from scratch? Oh, yeah. The previous couple of directors had um, put together an operations manual, an extensive list of docs on uh, Google Docs. So all the pertinent records are available. Um, and I've also had the, the pleasure of working with, with Barnaby and Mackenzie, the former assistant director, um, help, helping to onboard me and, and, uh, get me up to speed. And, you know, Mackenzie and Ben are both, uh, available to call on if, if I run into a crisis, which as you can imagine, are many. Yeah. Do you have a staff as such, or is it you and just all volunteers? Well, um, the festival starts really staffing up uh, two to three weeks beforehand. We have um, our merchandise cap captain, Johnny Tunnell, who's been keeping Wegmans fully stocked. Um, we've got Jill Dowd and Jade Edmondson, who are going to be running our merchandise booths. Uh, we've got uh, Leon Loveless, who's kind of my second in command. She's uh, kind of taken on the assistant director position, kind of late in the game and um, is also coordinating volunteers. We have a woman from outside of town, Rebecca Axtell, who's the head of the Button Brigade. She's got a whole system for running that that whole crew. And uh, we've got Jackie Moon, Shane Hoyt, uh, who are some of our festival lieutenants. They're, they're going to oversee specific areas of the festival. Um, Katie Walker is our um, food coordinator. And then we have all of the various contractors and volunteers and everybody else that kind of makes it run. And, um, you know, the cool thing about the festival is that people know how to run it, you know, in the absence of a director, it, it could probably still run on its own. But, uh, that also, you know, that's kind of a blessing and a curse, I guess, because people come with their preconceived notions and, um, the festival runs a certain way, the way it's always been done. And maybe it's not the best way. Maybe there's a better way to do it. Like I said, just getting one under my belt this year and then kind of see how it all goes down and then start making some key changes here and there to kind of make it more efficient and to kind of rejuvenate the organization. That makes sense. So how is Ithaca Festival funded? What's its model? Um, it's completely pu funded by the public um, in the form of either sponsors um, that's, that's kind of the seed money that gets the festival going that pays me during the off season to, to actually do the operations of the festival. And then, um, we sell a bunch of ads in our program, um, that has already gone to print and you'll find that out and about. And then, um, all the rest of the funding happens at the festival, our beer and wine sales, our merchandise sales, um, our, our different fees and, and whatnot that we take in from our various vendors. And that's basically it. Uh, it's not funded by the city at all. 
Um, it's not a branch of Ithaca. It's, it's a independent standalone 501 C three. Um, and, uh, I guess on one hand, we're always kind of scrambling for cash, but on the other hand, we're independent and, um, we, we get to do things that maybe we wouldn't get to do if we were like at a department of the city. So, yeah, I always get a button every year. Um, usually during the parade when people are walking around hawking them. Um, but I know they're at Wegmans too and probably throughout the city. Yeah. And we, we like to say that your, your button purchase is your ticket to the festival. It's a free festival, but buy a button. Come on. <laughs> yeah. It's only five bucks. That's right. Uh, but there are t-shirts too. And on the t-shirt every year is beautiful artwork with uh, that year's Ithaca Festival theme. And what is this year's theme? This year's theme is Arts, Agriculture, Adventure. Um, and the festival art was created by Shira Evergreen, who's also happens to be our graphic designer. So this year I wanted to take it in a little bit different direction. Um, we've had a lot of like straight up art over the years and, um, that can be hit and miss when it comes to selling merchandise because it can be a little busy. It's expensive to print when you have like multiple colors on a, on a screen. So these aren't necessarily considerations that an artist is thinking about, but whereas a graphic designer, that's their life is line work and, and fonts and, you know, composition. So, um, we decided to go in that direction this year. Shira had been kind of promoting herself over the last couple of years as a possibility. And finally, this was her year. And I think she did a fantastic job. And she managed to take um, elements of the, the design and scatter them throughout the program and all of our branding as well. So I think it's a really cohesive look this year. Um, thanks to her. Sounds awesome. So the festival has been around since 1977. Do you know the history or is there anything you can say about you know, the long history of the festival? Well, um, the Ithaca Festival and myself are actually the same age, uh, so the Ithaca Festival's got a month on me. Um, we're also the same age as Star Wars, so make it that what you will. The Ithaca Festival started out as Celebration Ithaca, um, and at that point it was a you know smaller street fair, and gradually over the years and under the direction of many, many different directors, it, it evolved into what it is today, which is uh, one of the the bigger community arts festivals in the country it draws about 50,000 people every year from all over the region. Um, you know, we've got 20 to 30 food vendors every year, hundreds of craft fair vendors, um, dozens of different organizations that come out to um, promote and spread the word about what they're doing. Tons of kids activities and over 80 time slots to fill. So it's, it's pretty big and it's a lot to handle. And I think it's, it's grown uh, well beyond its intended limits. So um. it's geographically big in that it covers a lot of the of the downtown, but it's also um, temporarily big in that it's like three days. It kicks off with the big parade on Friday. What's it like to organize? You know, everyone getting into the parade. Well, luckily, that's one of the tasks that uh, I don't have to take care of. Um, our parade marshal, who's also a board member, Drew Noden, um, has organized the parade for the last 10 years or so. So he's he knows what he's doing. Um, we have a support staff that puts up all the temporary barricades and all the no parking signs. We flyered the neighborhood last weekend um, just to let everybody know that it's coming. But Drew does the bulk of the work. Yeah. And then uh, this year, the big new addition is that we've added a whole bunch of after dark events. So. Um, starting on Friday, we've got, um, the big Lebowski showing at the state theater Saturday night. We've got the sing along Greece. Oh, Friday, actually also, uh, sheer, sheer evergreens, um, mini documentary Ithaca's murals is going to be showing, um, just prior to the big Lebowski. So Great. really excited about that. Get to see all the murals and see some of Shira's other talents in action. Um, we've also got two events at, uh, community school of music and art or CSMA up on state street. We've got the farmer's ball on Friday night with Lila bell, pine box and whistle and dill. Um, there's going to be food provided by, um, healthy food for all. Um, and it should be a hoot. Um, we've also got on Saturday night, whiskey tango leading up, uh, a lineup, uh, for our old time variety show at CSMA. Um, and so that's magic, jazz, blues, comedy, laughs and whatever, you know, what, what do they, what do they say for those vaudeville shows? Something for everybody. 
always is. And like during the festival, there are how many stages simultaneously? There's like so much music and you have to really choose what where you go to. Yeah, there's there's uh four stages. Uh Bernie Milton Pavilion goes all weekend. We've got the busking area and also that kind of bleeds over into what we call Cayuga Circle, which is on, actually on the street. So we've got street performers there. Um we've got a stage at DeWitt Park and then we've got another stage at uh Press Bay Alley. Um, so lots of music, a l- lot of different genres covered and not just music. We've got belly dance troops, hula troops, Israeli dancers, you name it, puppets, kids, kids, uh, magic and, and, uh, storytelling, all sorts of stuff. The one thing that, uh, I think myself and uh, my staff are most excited about though, is the, uh, silent disco that's going to be happening on the commons Friday and Saturday night. Um, it's going to start up as soon as, um, our, uh, headlining acts get off the Bernie Milton stage. Um, what it is basically you get a set of headphones and, um, you can tune into up to three day DJs at once. Um, so over the course of those two nights, we're going to have 19 different local DJs performing, um, and it'll go late. So, um, we're going to keep the party going. That's really, that's really cool. So I've seen that on the commons before at another event, but, I think the component that sounds new to me is that you can tune into multiple DJs and, and that they're local. It's not just pre-recorded music. Yeah, and this is part of a partnership with the Ithaca DJ Festival um, headed up by uh, Ben Ortiz, who's the curator of the Cornell Hip Hop Library, a- a.k.a. DJ Ben Hameen. Um, and uh, yeah, he was the one that, that got the silent disco going for the Chowder Fest and um he brought this to us and I, I think it's just a great idea, a great way to definitely engage the the townies more. I think a lot of folks that um younger folks don't even come out during the day because it's so crowded and it's a bunch of tourists and um so we wanted to create as many different events uh after dark as we could just so that we can kind of tap into all the the towny party energy. So um, hopefully it should be a good time. Yeah. I mean, it's great that, that you're doing more to involve people who live here year round, but even those people, uh, many of us all enjoy the vendors that, that set up shop all around downtown, including the foods that we don't usually have. A lot of it's carnival food. So it's not, you know, gourmet or special per se, but it's fun. And so we look but Hey, to you it. know, when, when, um, you know, I smell that Italian sausage, it's like, I got, I go running, man. It's like, it's, for me, it's, it's the kettle corn. I yeah. love it. I get a huge bag of it every year. Not to mention all the fried stuff. Yeah, but the ethnic f- foods are good too. Tons just, of funnel cakes. Yeah. What's the process for recruiting vendors or is it just so, like, is it so, such a demand that you don't even have to really? Um, we, we, uh, always invite back our vendors from previous years to apply. Um, we, we get new applicants every year as well. Um, there's always new, um, food businesses coming on the scene here in Ithaca, but, uh, yeah, it's very competitive. Um, we want to keep it, um, pretty tight and make sure that our vendors, uh, can handle such a high volume because it's, it's crazy. Um, I talked to, uh, Benny up at Sangam when I was collecting his, uh, application and he was like, yeah, we don't even look up. It's just like <laughs> scooping and head down the whole time. Yeah. So, how about the the vendors who sell jewelry and other stuff? What qualifications are you looking for? Well, we uh, definitely look for vendors that um, make their own products for sure. Um, we try to give preference to local vendors, but um, there's there's honestly not too many um, in the craft fair, and try to provide as much variety as possible um, because it could be easy to, you know, have like 10 different booths doing bead necklaces. So um, that whole situation is actually run by the downtown Ithaca Alliance. So they run the application online and then um, I sit on the jury uh, with them. But uh, yeah, they mostly do all the heavy lifting on that. A lot of local musicians perform at Ithaca Festival too, uh, regional ones as well. Who are the big headliners this year? So we kick it off on Friday night with the Blind Spots, uh, hometown favorite, um, good friends of mine. Um, and uh, yeah, Maddie Walsh, uh, the singer for the Blind Spots, has also kind of become uh, 
pretty active uh, recently in different different causes. And so um, I really admire what she's been doing, kind of using the stage as as her soapbox and, and using that mic for other things other than entertainment. Um, she recently collaborated with several local uh, musicians to put out a track that um, sales of which go to fund Planned Parenthood. So that's really cool. Nice. And uh, I applaud her for that. Saturday night, we've actually got a jam-packed schedule, um, back-to-back-to-back music on the stage, um, starting with Mutron Warriors, and then um, we're going to have a little teaser performance from Mr. McBean, who's going to be also hosting an after party at Lot 10. Um, That's a Smack Records uh, showcase that's going to fund Southside Community Center Unity Studio. And then... um, then we've got another performance from Route 13. Um, that's Crow Greenspun's hip hop uh, group, and then um, Big Mean I Town Review. So it's Big Mean Sound Machine going to be backing up probably a dozen or more uh, local singers that are going to be doing uh, Motown. So if you haven't been to the Big Mean I Town Review, you don't want to miss it. It sounds amazing. Yeah, and then Sunday night, my neighbor actually Treese is going to be uh, heading up Sunday with uh, Stone Cold Miracle. So uh, you know, the second word represent on Sunday night. Amazing lineup. So where can people go for more information? Well, you can head on over to the website. It's uh, IthacaFestival.org. Uh, also, we're posting all of the events that we, uh, we set up or other people set up on the Facebook page. So head to the Ithaca Fest Facebook page if you want to um, say that you're going to those different events and share them with your friends. Um, also, should put in a plug for our volunteers. Um, actually, uh, Mayor Svante Myrick is going to be volunteering with us this year. Um, and he's graciously offered to have lunch with uh, one lucky volunteer. So if you head on to uh, the website, look for the applications and sign up to become a volunteer, you might uh, get to have lunch with the mayor. So um, also all of our volunteers get a button. And if you work a, a certain number of hours, you'll get you'll get lunch on us. So it sounds good. What kind of positions are you still looking to fill? Well, we need trash haulers. We need merchandise uh, handlers. We need... Uh, well, uh, Leon, our volunteer coordinator, calls them button pushers, but it's actually the button brigade. They're all of the folks that you see out during the parade and during the festival selling buttons. That's actually, like we talked about before, those buttons really do help us fund the festival. So, And we've got a lot of other uh, unsung tasks that, um, that need filling, so head on over to the website and fill that out. I'll be, I recently joined the board of the United Way. I'll be volunteering for them during the festival. Uh, but I also will be, as I do every year, be buying a button, buying beer and other things to support the festival and just enjoying myself the whole time. I look forward to it every year, especially the parade. You know, they say Ithaca is quirky, among other things, and you see it in full display during that parade. Yeah, and if you're not from Ithaca, definitely get to the parade because if you want to know like who we are as a people, as a community, like we're all represented there. I think there's 2,700 different participants in the parade this year, um, from the Volvo Ballet to the Fall Creek Brass Band and everything in between. Um, and actually, um, I should say, uh, the parade is going to be headed up and officiated by um, Chief Sam George from the Cayuga Nation this year, followed Wonderful. by the Cayuga Dancers. So um, that's super special and quite an honor that he chose to participate this year. Um, one other uh, show I should mention before we wrap up is that Thursday night, uh, May 31st, down at the Ithaca Farmer's Market, there's going to be a night market starting at 4 p.m. And then at 6.30, doors open for Sim Redmond and Thousands of One down at the Farmer's Market. So um, that's a show that's kind of become a informal Ithaca Fest tradition and um, hasn't happened in the last couple of years. So I know people are super excited. So make sure you get down there early so you can get in. I think we're going to easily reach capacity, so you don't want to miss that. Well, great. Thanks so much for coming here to talk about the Ithaca Festival. Again, that's ithacafestival.org. All right, man. Thanks so much for coming. All right. Thanks a lot, Doug.